Good morning to you. Mark out of HurricaneTrack.com here. Time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. It is now Saturday. Happy Saturday to you, November 5th, 2022. Going to talk about this active Atlantic that we still have, even though it is November. The good news, I will start off, the GFS has at least for now backed off on this crazy idea of a solid hurricane headed for Florida. That's not to say that won't still happen, because again, we don't know the future for sure, but that is a good sign that it has backed off. Now that being said, that orange area that's over there on the title card is there for a reason, and we're still going to get a very large storm system with a wide variety of impacts covering a large area of coastline. It just doesn't look like, at least for now, that it'll be as concentrated as what the GFS was indicating for a few runs uh, culminating yesterday afternoon around the 18Z. That was pretty wild there. It backed off on the 0Z and the 6Z. I'll show you as we progress through here. All right, all right, good to have you this morning. Well, let's take a look at what we have out there first. The satellite version of the graphical tropical weather outlook. Lisa still down here as a depression. Not much to really worry about with that at all. Look, you can even see here that the upper level winds are very, very strong. Let's get a color and thickness that you can see. Uh, look at that, it's getting sheared apart, so really no issue there at all. This is the area we're gonna have to really start watching. And this too is starting to flare up a little bit. Which one of these, maybe both, become named storms? This one could be brief. Uh, this could last a little longer and be much more impactful from areas of the Outer Banks of North Carolina all the way down to eastern Florida and maybe even in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, maybe. Uh, this one's definitely got our attention here over the next five days. And that is the source here of the title card. That's where that came from. And what do we got? Well, it's 20% over the next two days, 60% now. So the probabilities are going up that this eventually develops. Uh, it won't be long that this will be tagged as an invest area, I am sure. And that'll assign more resources and recon will eventually get tasked to go out and fly this system. It's not time yet. It's not very organized just yet, but uh, all of that is coming. And then we've got our other system over here, 20 and 30% respectively. It is flaring up a little bit more this morning, so I think these odds are going to go up as well. By the way, the next two names, I believe, would be Nicole and Otto, O-T-T-O. -T -T -O. Um, let me just look it up on the old... Phone. You know what? It's over here, right? Under Educational Resources. I just like to make sure that I'm accurate. Uh, Nicole and Owen. So I wasn't accurate. And that's why I looked things up. So Owen. I thought it was auto. Is there an auto anywhere? No. Oh, well. That's fine. It's Owen. Like Owen Wilson, the actor. I'll have to remember that. And Nicole Kidman. There you go. Maybe they can star in a movie about hurricanes together. All right. Enough of the dad jokes. Uh, all kidding aside, the next two names, Nicole and Owen. So we'll see which one of these, neither, both. We'll just have to wait and see how that evolves. But seriously, the real issue here, and yes, yesterday I was a little bit uh, vexed by, oh, look at that, it could be a hurricane. The GFS kind of throwing a curveball in there. But it was pretty much alone. Uh, the other models were showing a much more spread out system. And that is still impactful, a spread out system. And so much so that the National Hurricane Center are issuing or is issuing key messages here for the system. And it's not even an invest area yet. And that's pretty significant. There's three different bullet points here that we're going to have a very large non-tropical area. At first, it could eventually develop some tropical or subtropical characteristics. And I've said this a lot over the last several days. These are all labels, classifications, you know that we mere humans put on these systems. The bottom line though, these are the things we need to look at are impacts. What will this do for us? And uh, you know, us being people that live along the coast. And these different bullet points here are important. Coastal flooding, rough surf, high wind, uh, beach erosion. You know, and Ian left a good deal of the east coast of Florida up through the Carolinas with some pretty bad uh, conditions along the dune lines there. Some of those dunes are gone. Different retaining walls have suffered damage, things like that. So a prolonged event of onshore flow could create some coastal flooding concerns, again, from the Carolinas south 
down towards Florida. That seems almost a certainty here where the details of how concentrated it is, what we label it, that'll all be figured out later on. All right? All right, so satellite animation this morning. There is Lisa in the Gulf of Mexico being sheared. This is the storm system that caused the deadly and very frightening tornado outbreak yesterday in portions of Texas and vicinity. That system is not quite as potent today, but the overall weather system moving along, and part of that is in imparting some shear across Lisa there in the Bay of Campeche. Here is our complex non-tropical area of energy uh, trying to come together there in the Caribbean, out of the Caribbean into the Southwest Atlantic. This is our other non-tropical area. There's some energy out here. A lot of rainfall down across parts of the Puerto Rico region and the Virgin Islands. I can show you that on radar scope real quick. Proving my point, yes, very, very heavy rain just coming in now to the northeast side of Puerto Rico. Even some rainfall across the U.S. and the British Virgin Islands. And I can show you that live and in person here. There's a live shot from our St. Thomas cam. Pretty good rain squall there in the distance in the background. That sort of fuzzy look to it. And over in San Juan itself, hopefully this will pull up quickly for me. It did, thank you. Kind of dry now, but the rain is coming. I just showed you that on radar. And finally, over in St. John at Brent's place over here, if this will jump on for me, it is raining there. So everything's nice and lush and green down there. Maybe some of those guts fill up. They call those guts, or we call them a gully or a wash. There's no rivers down there. They fill up only when they get rain. There are some rivers, of course, in Puerto Rico, but St. John does not have rivers. They just have these guts that fill up when you get rainfall like what we are seeing here. All right, now where was I? I was here. So let's transition to this. This is the vorticity signature of our different features. If you sort of peel away the cloud cover and look at the energy below, this is what you get. Some of it trying to come together here in the southwestern Atlantic. Let's recircle it there so it shows up better. And then there's more energy there in the Caribbean. I think what's going to happen, this is going to pivot up and kind of join the club, so to speak, join the rest of the party and try to get things going even more. This is more heat energy down here. And then we're going to have this broad area of low pressure, large wind field, big high pressure. Come on, draw on here for me, please. Big high pressure is going to build over here. This is a very simple way to look at it. We're going to have low pressure down here, and the gradient between the two is going to create this stiff east to northeast flow for two or three or more days. And that is really going to pile the water up along the coast down here. High tide cycle after high tide cycle. All right, so here's what it looks like now. Again, let's just go back real quick. Yesterday, the 12Z GFS definitely started getting my attention because it was bundling that energy right there and taking it into Florida uh, not far from Palm Bay north of West Palm Beach or close to West Palm Beach I guess really and it crossed over and did all sorts of mischief and then all right maybe that was a one-off but then the 18z was even stronger I thought oh boy here we go that's all we need and then finally we get to the 0z last night if it'll do it, the zero Z last night. Oh, what a difference. What a difference there. And look, people like to slap these adjectives that it sucks, it's terrible, it's garbage. It's like you don't even know what you're talking about. The model is trying to figure out. And there's more math baked into this model than you could ever possibly fathom. Uh, it's not my model. I didn't come up with it, so you're not offending me. But the people that create these, they deserve a little bit more respect than that. It's not garbage. It's not trash. It's trying to figure out the freaking atmosphere. I mean, come on. Um, you know, if you had to do it on, on pen and paper and, and write all these computations down, you couldn't do it. I mean, people tried many years ago before numeric weather prediction. But it is difficult, so seriously, have a little bit of, of respect. Remember in Jurassic Park when that kid was like, it just looks like a turkey or whatever, and uh, Dr. Grant is like, show a little respect or whatever. I mean, it's true. Um, people think they know more than what they know. They really do. 
and the model is trying to figure out what's happening here because there's a lot of energy, there's a lot of heat, and the GFS, yes, it has this bias where sometimes it can take an area of energy or vorticity and run with it like a kid jacked up on candy or sugar. I mean, even I can do that. But um, yes, I mean, come on. Let's give the model a break here. It's trying to figure out more than we could ever fathom. So that being said, my little rant and then soapbox moment. Uh, this is what it's showing from the zero Z out to day five there. Let's just back it up a little bit. Watch how this evolves. Kind of got ahead of ourselves there. Uh, let's see. Here we are. 12 Z Saturday. So here's our current situation. And there's our one system out here. See, it is trying to bundle that. And that makes sense because it's already looking pretty sharp on the vorticity signature. And that's what this part of the model is showing. I mean, there it is. There's the reality. That's what's happening in real life. IRL, isn't that what people call it? That's in real life. This is a snapshot. This is the model interpretation. That's pretty good, pretty close. So it develops this one pretty solidly, I guess you could say, especially for November, for goodness sakes. So that could become Nicole, and then this spread out mess down here, subtropical in nature. It is. It's spread out over a much larger area. That is much more concentrated. A great example. I mean, served up perfectly for me. More concentrated, more tropical looking, less concentrated, less tropical. So we call this subtropical, the wind field, the pressure gradient, all of that much more spread out. And so this could be Nicole, and this one could be Owen, but it would be subtropical Owen. Nevertheless, uh, it's a large sprawling system in the modeling there. We're going out to about five days, and then at six days, it's still hanging around out there. In seven days, oh, there it goes, trying to do its thing, where it, the bias of, and maybe, maybe it is this bias. I don't know. It's the future. It's 168 hours out. Maybe that's what happens. I don't know. Nobody knows for sure. But it is interesting to see how it went from, oh my goodness, there could be a hurricane headed for Florida to a big sloppy mess. But what you need to look at, and this is kind of high in the atmosphere, about 5,000 feet, but those northeast winds are going to pile up against the coast down there. We can look at the surface and are close to it, 10 meters anyway. And, you know, these are not particularly strong. These flags here, there's three of them, so that's 30 knots, but it's constant, and they're blowing over hundreds and hundreds of miles. And where does that wind field terminate? Right against the coast down there. So what was battered by Ian will be battered more by this coastal storm, almost a certainty that this is going to happen, even if it's not what the GFS was advertising yesterday. What about the Euro? It has been fairly consistent, to give it credit, and so we look at the 6Z run from the Euro and a large spread out system. Uh, that's a lot of energy over a large area. And again, that wind field, same kind of thing, going to really pile up the ocean there against Florida and other parts of the southeastern United States. So we will need to be watching this closely for the impacts, the impacts, right? So one thing that is important, we still have plenty of upper ocean heat content around the southeast uh, coastal waters and offshore to the southwest Atlantic. So there is energy. It's not like the GFS was just completely out to lunch. There's a lot of energy down there, especially in the vicinity of Florida and the Bahamas. So I don't want to say, hey, look, it's not going to happen what the GFS was showing. We don't know for sure. Maybe it was signaling what could happen if things align the right way. So I want to be careful here. I'm showing you, you know, what we've learned since yesterday, but I don't want to just pull back completely and say there's no way that's going to happen because I guess there is a way. The GFS was showing you that way if those conditions come together. One of those ingredients, it would be upper ocean heat content values or the, the availability of latent heat, and that is there. So this storm certainly has energy to work with if the atmosphere will cooperate which it doesn't look like it's as likely to do for a more concentrated wind event for a smaller area, but a larger, more impactful storm for a larger area seems more likely. It's kind of like, you know, pick your, pick your poison. Um, 
either way, there's going to be a, a lot of impacts here for the southeast United States and particularly, I think, the east coast of Florida. All right. All right. That is it from me for today. Time to get out of here and take my son up to New Bern where we have a soccer game. Uh, he's the goalkeeper, by the way, so he's he's got his work cut out for him. You all have a great rest of your Saturday doing whatever it is you're doing. I'll stay on top of this. I will tweet from time to time. Uh, blah, if I can talk. Be sure to follow me. It's Saturday and whatever. Uh, and Owen and Otto and Nicole. Yeah, whatever. Follow me on Twitter, at Hurricane Track. At least I do know that still. And it's interesting, too, because YouTube has just introduced handles lately. And you can follow me on YouTube, at Hurricane Track, as well. Did you know that? Yeah, you can just go right into YouTube, search at Hurricane Track, just like you do on Twitter. And, um, yeah, you can follow along, subscribe, like, and share, and do all that wonderful stuff that all the YouTube creators ask you to do. All right? All right. I'm out of here. Let's get this online for you. Again, have a great rest of your Saturday. I'll be back tomorrow with more for you. I am Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track. Let's talk again some more tomorrow.